Hey, X-World, it's me, yours truly. Boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Las Vegas. It's nice to have a beautiful day like this. Hey, let me take a moment to say thank you to all the people who've reached out to me. Uh, uh, my health is good. I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues. Uh, but, hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be uh, back on that golf course, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. But it was very nice hearing from you and hearing those good, positive words. Thank you. God bless. Take care. It's a heavy day, but the early parts of O.J. Simpson's life we honor and respect. There's no doubt that he was a sports icon, Heisman Trophy winner. He ended his pro career with 11,236 rushing yards, 2,142 receiving yards, 990 kick return yards. Simpson totaled 14,368 all-purpose yards in 135 games, and he scored 76 total touchdowns. So all my football fans, I take it you understand those stats. Now, he did the famous Hertz commercials. He was a heck of an endorser. He really opened the door for athletes to generate income in that way because no one was really doing sports marketing before him. Now it is the norm to see athletes endorse products, but OJ was really the beginnings of that. He was an actor. He starred in Roots, Naked Gun. But then in the later parts of his life, it took a turn. His ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, were unalived in a gruesome manner. OJ was charged for these heinous crimes. He went from being a sports idol to a celebrity in exile. He was ultimately acquitted, but the endorsement opportunities left. He couldn't make an income outside of his pension due to losing a civil case against the families of Nicole and Ron. The civil case ruled that he was liable for their deaths, so he ended up owing their families 30 plus million dollars, but he said he would never pay for a crime he did not commit. The Goldmans were relentless, however, when it came to trying to get what they feel they were owed. OJ was ordered to give up some of his sports memorabilia that was of high value, but he didn't want to do that. So he allegedly hid some of those items. And because he was doing that, he claimed one of his friends ended up stealing those items. And that led to the so-called hotel robbery in Las Vegas, where OJ confronted his former friends demanding they give him his stuff back. He was then charged with robbery and other felonies. In 2008, he was found guilty. And some believe even the DA that charged him for the Nicole and Ron deaths, they believe the judge in the robbery case sentenced OJ to the max of 33 years as a payback for the Nicole and Ron deaths. Nevertheless, OJ spent about nine years in prison, but he was released on parole and he spent the last years of his life in Las Vegas playing golf, which he loved and spending time with his kids and grandchildren. He set up a Twitter, now X account, and spoke often on football, and just recently joined Cameron and Mace on their podcast, Speaking on Football. People seem to both hate and love OJ, and I have to say he had some charm. He was a likable guy on the surface, always spoke positively, really had a growth mindset, you know, that kind of law of attraction kind of mindset. Even with cancer, he said he had it before, it came back, but he will beat it again. Now, on the other side of him, whether he was abusive or whether he unalived his ex-wife and her friend, we can go down rabbit holes. There are books, documentaries. Hell, even OJ did a book and interview saying, if I did it, this is how I would have done it. <laughs> I mean, Lord have mercy. But despite that, he did maintain his innocence, at least publicly. As we reflect on his life, we're reminded of the complexities of human nature. The admiration for his athletic prowess, and charm is juxtaposed with the darker allegations and legal battles that followed. In the end, as we contemplate mortality, we're reminded that our deeds, good or bad, ultimately become a part of a larger narrative beyond our earthly existence. So with all of that, one thing I'm learning as I get older and witness my loved ones transition, the good, the bad, the ugly, none of it you can take with you. When we die, our souls leave this earth alone. And whatever he did or didn't do, that is now between him and God or whatever you choose to believe. It's not fame or fortune that defines us, but the character of our souls and the legacy we leave behind. But while O.J. Simpson, the infamous, the famous, the villain to some, the icon, 
May you rest in peace.